and then we can get down to the meat of our presentation here. Fantastic. So this afternoon's training is on coordinate systems and using custom grids in Terrain Navigator Pro. One of the things that we'll, we will briefly go through is how to find a coordinate on a map, how to switch between coordinate systems in Terrain Navigator Pro, how to set your preferred coordinate uh, uh, system as a uh, general preference. We'll also have a, a discussion of, um, as a subcategory of that, township section range coordinates. And we'll talk a little bit about datum, uh, what those are, how to select datum, uh, and so forth. And then we'll have a discussion on custom grids on maps and using those for both on screen and for printing. So the first thing we want to do here is, um, let's say you're working with a client or a customer or you have a location. And that's basically, uh, you have a coordinate. In Terrain Navigator Pro, uh, the way that you would uh, search would be, uh, let's say you do have a coordinate and you want to find that uh, coordinate, you would go to the Find menu and you would enter coordinates. Now I have uh, a specific uh, coordinate that I'm going to enter here. And one of the things that you can see here as the top drop down list is you can choose what type of map uh, that you want. So I'm going to leave this as satellite, uh, the format type. I'm going to talk about these just briefly here, just to you know take a look at them, and then we're going to go into each of these in more de detail. So you have DMS, degrees, minutes, seconds. You might remember that from uh, your geography class back in grade school, degrees, minutes, minutes, degrees, degrees. UTM stands for Universe uh, Transverse Mercator. MGRS uh, stands for Military Grid Reference uh, System. Uh, and then there's three different settings depending on whether you want one meter, 10 meter, or 100 meter. Uh, there's also uh, one uh, kilo as well. The next coordinate uh, system would be USNG, United States National Grid. Again, those come in different flavors. And uh, for those that are surveyors, or others that are uh, uh, familiar with that, we do offer state plane in feet in meters. And then for uh, some of the states that work with township section range, uh, you can uh, search for coordinates um, using, uh, you can search on those coordinates as well. But for the uh, purposes of our training this afternoon, my location is going to be the um, uh, the airplane boneyard in Arizona. And so I'm going to choose uh, degrees, minutes, seconds. I'm going to choose, I have my uh, coordinates uh, are, let's go ahead and get those entered in. It's 32, it's 08, and it's 59.96. And then our west is 110, it's 50, and it is uh, 09.03 by west. So here we have latitude, longitude, uh, which uh, represents location, and then we have something that's called datum. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, datum a little bit later, but for uh, right now, we're just going to suffice to mention that we have three different types of datum or projections uh, in Terrain Navigator Pro, which is the NAD27, NAD83, and WGS84. Just going to go ahead with WGS84. I'm going to replace my active map. And what you'll see on our screen uh, is the uh, aircraft. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit uh, and you'll get a better picture. You'll see the uh, desert, sitting, uh, the aircraft sitting out there in the desert. For the purposes of our this afternoon's training, I have uh, a uh, symbol here that's on my map. Um, and the symbol right now next to the map, you'll see a well. So I just chose uh, a water symbol. And right now I do have a label at a specific coordinate. Um, now, when, once 
I just want to talk a couple of uh, about a couple of uh, different things here. Degrees, minutes, seconds is the default coordinate system in Terrain Navigator Pro, and it's the most commonly used. Um, one of the things when you want to set your preferences in Terrain Navigator Pro, you go to the File menu, you do choose uh, Preferences, and you go to Coordinate, and we have uh, degrees, minutes, seconds uh, here. What you'll see is from this window, you have a lot of options available to you. Right now, I have a primary coordinate display, um, and I'm going to mention the alternate co coordinate display is, let's say, you wanted to know the exact location of a marker, but you were working with two different coordinate systems. Maybe you were working, you know, uh, talking with a client that, uh, for whatever reason, maybe their GPS unit or something else uh, was not set to degrees, minutes, seconds. Perhaps it was set to state plane or one of our other coordinate systems in Terrain Navigator Pro. We could go ahead and I'm going to change and set up an alternate display for state plane just to demonstrate this for you. I'm going to close the preferences box. And what I want to show you is up here uh, in the um, uh, on the toolbar, you'll see the primary coordinate uh, system, and then you'll see the secondary coordinate system. That way, you could be talking the same language if, indeed, you needed to know your location in two different types of uh, coordinate systems. I'm going to go back through, and we're going to talk a little bit more about and display uh, some of these uh, different coordinates. So here we have degrees, minutes, seconds. Uh, we've already, uh, you'll see the label that I have for our symbol has that coordinate system on that. Let's say we change this to UTM, Universe Transverse Mercator. Um, what we could do is go ahead and uh, select a datum. One of the things that I'd like to mention about datum is that uh, it's very important to know um, the datum of any coordinate before relying on it for navigation. So we, we have the ones that we talked about, the NAD27, the NAD83, and the WGS84. If you're not sure about what coordinate system to use, or if you're not sure what datum to use, a couple of suggestions for you. Uh, check with, if you're working with clients, uh, ask them what coordinate system they're using and what datum. Um, they should be able to help you with that. Or if you're working with the GPS, you want to make sure that the GPS uh, coordinates match uh, what you set in Terrain Navigator Pro for that setting. And as far as uh, datum are concerned, Datum, if you're not sure what projection to choose, uh, a good place to start is with WGS84. It's the last projection that, um, you know, uh, that was uh, made available. So that's a good place to start as well. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to change my format to UTM. I've got my datum set to WGS84. And right now I'm going to just go ahead and close that. And I'm going to zoom back a little bit out of the uh, uh, zoom back and you'll see the coordinate label changed and it matches our uh, primary display uh, here on the toolbar. So as you change uh, your coordinate system, you know, that does uh, apply to all the things that have to do with that particular project, uh, which is a, uh, that's a uh, good thing to know. Another thing is, let's go ahead, I'm going to go back into preferences for a second here. Uh, we've uh, taken a look at what UTM looks like. What does military grid reference system to one meter? What does that look like? So let's go ahead and you'll see, uh, you know, that coordinate system has, you know, letters and, and numbers uh, associated uh, with that. Um, it's, it's a good way. You really want to match up your coordinate systems for what you're working with. Let me go back to my preferences. I'll go back to coordinate. And uh, one of the things that you'll see 
USNG is going to be the same sort of thing as the military grid reference uh, system. It is, let me just, um, uh, just mention a couple of things here with respect to that. We talked about universe transverse mercative. That is often used in uh, military and it's in conjunction with GPS units. Uh, the UTM coordinate system is completely different than latitude longitude. UTM uses an imaginary grid of equidistant perpendicular lines to divide the globe into 60 zones. Uh, position is indicated in meters within a zone. So again, let me just go back to my UTM um, and so that you can uh, take a look at that. Uh, uh, this makes UTM the preferred system for ground navigation. So for ground navigation, uh, chances are you're gonna want to use uh, the UTM uh, coordinate system. I'm gonna go back to my preferences. I'm gonna go back to coordinate and talk a little bit about the MGRS. Uh, let's go ahead and specify that down to one meter. Uh, the MGRS is a system which uses a standard scale grid square based on a point of origin on a map projection of the Earth's surface in an accurate and consistent manner to, per to permit either position referencing or the computation of direct and distance between grid positions. Terrain Navigator Pro will allow you to specify one meter, 10 meter, 100 meter, and one kilometer MGR grid intervals. Grid positions are calculated based on the MGRS3 specification. So uh, if you're working uh, you know, with the military, um, then chances are that's the MGRS is the one that you're gonna want to use. With respect to uh, USNG or United States National Grid, uh, that system is basically identical to MGRS, the exception being that MGRS and the USNG use a different notation when NAD27 datum uh, is specified. Terrain Navigator Pro will allow you to specify one meter, 10 meter, 100 meter, and one kilometer USNG grid intervals. And again, the grid we're talking about, as you'll see, uh, right now I do have custom grid turned on on the map, and that's the white uh, squares that you see. We'll talk about a little bit about that after we get through coordinate systems. Um, the very last one that I do want to display for you is going to be township section and range. Um, this uses a rectangular grid system that's based on uh, principal meridian and a baseline and divided into townships, sections, and parcels. This is also known as the PLSS, the Public Land Survey System. So some states, um, you know, have been outlined or surveyed uh, using township section range. I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, uh, township section and range. And let me zoom out of my map here. You'll see uh, the grid system here for township section and range uh, is along these. Uh, go ahead and zo zoom out one more time. It's just uh, so there we have it. Uh, the different uh, township uh, section range uh, capabilities there, which is uh, a handy thing um, to have. Do I have any questions at this point? I know we've covered the different types of uh, coordinate systems. Um, is there anyone that has any questions at this point? Okay, fantastic. Wow. Um, I'd like to mention, uh, and we're gonna go back here and visit with our symbol on the map here, uh, which is our well or the water source here. Uh, what I'd like to mention about that is um, the, um, it's very easy to go ahead and if you have, a uh, position on the map um, or a marker on the map, um, you can uh, easily uh, find that. And you can use that, you know, if you go to the find, you can find a marker, for example, uh, and be able to easily find that marker. Uh, for anyone that might be interested in an in-depth study of coordinate systems and datum, 
what I have been doing is just highlighting from a high level uh, the different types of coordinate systems and what data actually is. Um, I would suggest that you visit the RGIS website. Uh, there's a wealth of technical knowledge there for anyone who wants to dig in deeper. Uh, you can contact me and I'll send you an email with a link if you want uh, further study on that, um, which is uh, fantastic. So um, there are no questions about uh, at this particular point. We have no questions on coordinate systems and when to use which ones and why it's important that they match your work and your uh, GPS unit. No, I guess I looks like that we have no questions, so I'll move on to our next topic, which is custom grids. Uh, Terrain Navigator Pro will let you place uh, grids on the map image to, uh, to serve as a visual aid. Uh, what I do is I'm going to go to the layer size visibility menu here, and you'll see uh, custom uh, grids. Let's turn that back on. I am going to change my coordinate system, so bear with me for a second. Go back to file uh, coordinates. Let's go back to, let's say, uh, degrees, minutes, seconds. Let's go ahead and close that out. You'll see my grid is here. Uh, if I go back to my layer size visibility, I can turn off uh, that custom grid. Uh, close that, and that will go away. But for the purposes of our training, we do want to see our custom grid. And uh, this custom grid, you as the user can specify the size and shape of it. And the way you would do that is to go to the file menu. You would then go to preferences. Uh, and you would go to custom grid. And what you'll see is that there's two types of grid spacing. There's coordinate uh, spacing, and then there's also magnetic spacing. And uh, the difference is gonna be uh, the grid will align if it's uh, according to your coordinates or magnetic meaning magnet magnetic north. Uh, you can then also say, okay, I'd like that spacing, and you can specify like that how many feet or how many. Um, uh, there's different. Uh, you can specify how many feet, kilometers, meters, miles, nautical miles, yards uh, that you want the grid to uh, to be. Let's say you wanted it at 500 um, feet. Um, Let's go ahead and make those changes. And you can also specify uh, the uh, how wide you want that to be on the screen display and so forth. Go ahead and click close and you'll see, uh, I'm gonna zoom in here. And as we zoom in, it's gonna give you the lines um, 500 feet apart. So you can imagine that that would be a very handy thing to have is the custom grid. One of the things that to note it, to note about the custom grid is um, the X value. Let me go back to that window. So if I go back to file, uh, let's go back to preferences and let's go to co uh, custom grid. Um, with, with respect uh, to the um, magnetic north, the spacing, uh, the X represents the width of the rectangles and Y represents the height. So you, it doesn't have to be even, it doesn't have to be 200 by 200. You can specify a custom one if you want. Um, and the color of the grid can be different. Um, you know, to plant, if you want, if you're working with topos, you can select the color there. If you're working with aerial photos, you can say, no, I want a different color and do any customizing there that you so wish. So um, one of the things that um, you do want to make sure if you are using custom grids uh, for your map work, uh, that again, under the layer size visibility menu, that it is turned on. Uh, I chose the shortcut here to get there. Uh, you could also go to, um, you know, uh, file. Uh, you could go to preferences, and you could go to layer size visibility alternatively and get the same uh, window as well. Now, in order, um, let's say you want to choose to, uh, you want to print a custom map either with or without the custom grid. 
let's go ahead and talk about that. So we have our grid turned on here. I'm going to go to the file menu. I will go to um, print and publish map. And let's give that a second. You'll see the grid here. Now, you, there are different things that you can, uh, if you've worked with custom maps in Terrain Navigator Pro before, you know that you can work with block styles. You can customize the map with your uh, company information, your company logo, what have you. One of the things that when you're working with custom grids that you want to pay attention to is under the format menu here. Uh, right now it's set to degrees, minutes, seconds. That's the same as the primary. So there is a selection here in the print publish uh, window that allows you, let's say you want to change for some reason. You don't want it to be in degrees, minutes, seconds, but let's say you want it in state plane. You can go ahead and uh, change uh, the uh, format to state plane. You can select your datum. Um, and under grid, here's where we have our grid style so that you can change if you want a ruler, if you don't want a ruler, uh, ruler with a grid default or ruler with custom grid. Um, and it will go ahead and make those updates and changes for you. You can also select uh, how uh, thin or wide you want that line to be. So again, uh, working with custom grids, those things can be changed um, easily uh, by just using a drop-down list and uh, you know changing the uh, format uh, that you want. I'd like to open it up to any questions um, at this particular time that pretty much draws our training to a conclusion for the topics that we said that we were gonna discuss uh, in the email that we sent. Jack, I see a question here. Uh, when I plot a location, how can I limit the number of decimals displayed? Let me go ahead and close this out, Jack. So, um, so Ed, I have Ed, the technical product manager, and uh, Ed, the question is, is he wants to limit the number of decimals. Yeah, that, uh, that is not something that Terrain Navigator Pro has a, uh, a control over. Uh, we, we give the, the decimal display um, as uh, it's, it's what they are set to is what they are set to. Uh, we want to display what's accurate, uh, but also what's reasonable. Um, you know, when you get into things such that the coordinates would be in fractions of inches, then it doesn't make, uh, you know, that's beyond the, the reasonable capabilities of what Terrain Navigator Pro is used for. Do we have, um, Jack, does that uh, uh, clarify that for you? Did you have a follow-up question to that? Thank you. Thank you for your reply, Jack. We have another question from Randy. We have trouble setting up printing to a larger plotter when we have, and we have two types, HPT 120. That would be beyond the scope of this um, webinar. I would uh, suggest talking to our, our customer service, sending a support to uh, an email to TNP support at trimble.com, and uh, we can take care of that uh, there. Excellent, Randy. Yeah, definitely send our uh, support a uh, email, and they'll be able to assist you with that. Do we have more questions? Well, um, that concludes this afternoon's uh, webinar on coordinate systems. I invite you, if you have any follow-up questions, uh, if you think of something later this afternoon, uh, please don't hesitate to send me an email. Also, if you need uh, free uh, training on Terrain Navigator Pro, contact me directly, and we can get that scheduled for you. I do thank you for your time, and we will be sure to send out uh, that link uh, when it becomes available on the TAP YouTube channel. So thank you so much and uh, have a great afternoon.
Thank you, Cheryl.